Question number two, I thought this was interesting. Can you please give some scripture that pertain to the kind of behavior a Christian should display? And I didn't put this in the question. It was in the question. Emphasis on display when an individual is angry or upset. Good question, isn't it? I bet every one of us have been in situations when we are mad as wet hens. In fact, just a few minutes ago, I pulled up Facebook, and one of my friends from over in Eastwood was just as mad as he could be at a girl. And folks, the post he put up was an extremely inappropriate post. It contained about three cuss words. If that's not enough, I don't know what is. And it was pretty long, and boy, he was just blasting this girl. It was unbelievable. I got on there and made a post back to him, told him he doesn't need to talk like that. Some girl came in defending him, drive me crazy. I said, wait a minute, you need to go talk to Billy. Billy knows who I am. And I said, he'll tell you exactly who I am, and then you'll kind of laugh at the relationship. But we all get mad. We all get angry. And the question that's being asked, give us some scripture as to how we are supposed to conduct ourselves when we're mad. Boy, we got the rest of the night, folks. It's going to be a long lesson. I got 10 points. You think I'm lying? Really, I got 11 because I'm going to give you an extra one that's free. Okay? How about this one? Folks, when you get angry, be like Jesus. Isn't that our responsibility? The Apostle Paul understood it. For me to live is Christ. Philippians 1 verse 21. Turn your psalm books for just a minute. There's a song there that's very, very interesting. Psalm 597. 597. The title of the song is this. Let the beauty of Christ be seen in me. I want you to listen to the first and last stanzas. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All His wonderful passion and purity. May His Spirit divine all my being refine. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Notice the fourth stanza. From the dawn of the morning to the close of day, in example in deeds and in all you say, lay your gifts at His feet. Ever strive to what? Keep sweet. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Folks, every day you and I need to arise and we need to do all we can do to be like Jesus. So if you get angry, tell yourself, okay, in this situation, I'm going to be like Jesus. Point number two. Here's the toughie. Practice self-control. The Bible says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Proverbs 16, 32. The Apostle Paul described it with these words in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Folks, God has given us the ability to control ourselves. The Bible refers to it as temperance. Temperance. We need to control our thoughts. We need to control our mouths. We need to control our body language. We need to control our actions. Everything there is about us. We get upset. Okay, I'm going to be like Jesus and I'm going to stay in control. That leads to the third point. Folks, you got to think. God gave you a noggin, my dad used to say. He gave us a head with a brain in it, didn't he? Everything we do passes first through the brain. Everything. 
Now there's people who deny that because they always react so quickly that they never ever stop to think. But folks, it doesn't have to be that way. I can stop and I can think about everything that I'm about to do. Isn't that what the writer of Proverbs said in Proverbs 4.23? Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So oftentimes, we just don't think long enough. You see, it's the thinking that helps me to stay in control of myself. Notice the next point. Be kind. Just be kind. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3.12, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, put on bowels of mercies, kindness. Ephesians 4.32, Be ye kind one to another. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Folks, I don't have to be unkind to any human being. I don't have to be. I can be if I want to, but I don't have to be. In fact, the Bible tells me don't do that. Be kind. Notice this next one. Sometimes, just what? Just shut your mouth. Just shut your mouth. The Bible plainly tells us in Proverbs 10, 19 that in a multitude of words there warneth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Sometimes it's best just not to say a word, isn't it? Watch this next one. Practice the golden rule. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 12, All things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Here you are, you're all upset, you're all been out of shape, you need to ask yourself the question. If the other person were upset at me, how would I want him to treat me? And folks, however you want to be treated is the very way you need to treat the other individual when you're upset. Watch this one. No excuses. Now the point's really deeper than that. No rationalizations, no justifications, no self-pride whatsoever. You see, oftentimes we get angry, and then what do we do? We justify ourselves. We rationalize what we have said or done. We make excuses, do we not? And sometimes we stand up, poke out our chest, and we're just proud of ourselves. Excuses like this. Well, I was having a bad day that day. That's an excuse, isn't it? How about this one? A justification. Well, he's the one who started it. There you go. He started it, I'll end it. <laughs> How about this one? Rationalization. Well, if you don't treat him like that, he'll never learn. There you go. Just rationalize. And self-pride. Boy, sometimes we leave the scene of the crime and what do we say? Boy, did I tell him. <laughs> well, we're just proud of ourselves. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. The Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good. See, so oftentimes we like to think of evil, evil stuff, don't we? Really evil stuff. Okay? Woe to them that call adultery good. Woe to them that call murderers good. But what about some of our little evil actions that we try to pawn off as good? My excuses, my justifications, my rationalizations. Woe unto him that calls evil good. Don't use the excuses. How about this one? Be patient. Just be patient. Went to Walmart last night and I thought I'd get there at a good hour. It was about a quarter to 11. And I'll get all this stuff and I'll get in and I'll get out. And I got to the line and we were about 10 deep. And I said, are you kidding? One line? That's it. Two workers over there talking. One line, one checker. 
Guy comes up behind me, says, just one line? I said, yep. Five minutes in, 15 out. And that's about what it took. Now guys, you can either get all bent out of shape and you kind of just want to holler out, don't you? Hey, are there not any more checkers around here? You don't do that. Just, just be patient. Endure. You're going to get out. Eventually. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.14, Be patient unto all men. That word means endure, folks. Just endure sometime. Notice this next one. When everything is said and done, you and I need to make certain that we are the what? The example. You know what? We need to be the example in the whole situation. Paul told Timothy, Be thou an example of the believers. When everything's said and done, and you're talking to another brother or sister in Christ about the situation, what you hope they can say is this, Wow, I hope I can do that in that situation. I hope I can act like you did in that situation. You want the other individual to walk away and say, Wow, wasn't he wonderful in that situation? I'm going to be just like him the next time I get all upset. Folks, we want to try to be examples to other people. And then lastly, resolve to heal the situation instead of hurting and harming the situation even more. Sometimes, you know what we need? We just need a good dose of how to solve a problem, don't we? When we were at the children's home, we had to teach kids how to do that. And it's not that hard. The hardest part is step number one. Accurately define the problem. That's the hardest part. Because sometimes what we do is, we don't really argue about the problem. We argue about everything else other than the problem. Find out what the problem is. Get the problem defined, and then guess what? Brainstorm for solutions. Once you've got all your solutions, choose one. Once you've chosen one, put it to work, and then come back together and evaluate how it's been working. If it doesn't work, pick another solution. Go to work at it, come back and reevaluate again. It's not that difficult. Sometimes we just don't want to have to go through the what? Want to have to go through the process. Oh, that's just a pain. But folks, what we're trying to do is learn how to be Christians when we're what? When we're upset. I told you I left one off the list. I probably left 10 or 15 off the list. You know what we all really need to do? We need to P-R-A. Why don't we? We just need to bow our heads and pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. This next statement is interesting. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. In everything give thanks. Father, I'm thankful that I've come to this moment. Father, I'm thankful that I have this opportunity to deal with this particular problem. I am grateful that I have the ability to grow. I'm thankful that I have the ability to be a Christian and practice a Christian example in this particular difficulty. Father, pray that I'll do what needs to be done to solve this problem. You see, we can pray in those kind of situations. I'll be hearing from you probably, Vic, you didn't leave this in. You should have put that in. There's a ton of things we could say, isn't it? But maybe we can follow some of those rules and be better.